you have made a study in your life of actually practicing a number of different forms of meditation. Yes. Why? <clears throat> because I find that the reality behind religion is real experience. And that's what meditation is about. And if there's not real experience, then you're talking theories or belief systems. So it has to be based on, on something testable experience, personal. And I, th I feel that that's the way that the world is moving now. Uh, before, uh, people were perfectly happy with believing. And now people are much harder, much tougher. And so we don't want to just say, I believe in something, unless we can really confirm that we, um, that we are experiencing it. But of course, it's very challenging, because who can say they have an experience of God? In fact, Sufism has a lot to say about this, because for one thing, my father said, uh, quite rightly again, he said, <clears throat> uh, when we talk about God, we often, uh, we don't realize that what we're talking about is our concept of God, rather than our experience of God. And so that experience, if we can talk about experience, is to be found amongst the mystics. So your practice of meditation was an attempt to, in a, in a sense, put it on a laboratory basis, yeah. to try it. I, I like that word, as a matter of fact, because I find that what mystics are doing is uh, making experiments in, uh, let's say, uh, the uncharted reaches of the mind, uh, beyond the middle range common denominator. And I think it's extremely valuable. What's the most surprising thing that you've discovered in your experimentation? <laughs> Good question. <clears throat> well, um, the first one is a negative one, and that is that uh, normally people, and that includes myself, are caught in their personal vantage point, and uh, instead of grappling with their problems, they're grappling with their concepts of their problems, and um, that... That's uh, an interesting delineation. Mm -hmm, yeah. With their concepts of their problems. The concept the of their problem. problems that we're projecting upon, our wor upon the world, our own psyche, and therefore it is time to wake up. And uh, my whole teaching is that. How do you wake up? How do you change your perspective so that you're able to see things differently to the way you saw them before? And by so doing, you are affirming your freedom against conditioning, which is, you know, one of the great ventures of the human spirit. <clears throat> so that's what it's all about. Uh, so uh, yeah, to answer your question, I think the real breakthrough is when one realizes that one cannot discover the software behind the universe because the, so the software <clears throat> behind the hardware that we consider to be the universe, because our minds is of the same nature as that software. You can't see your eyes. So uh, the breakthrough is when, uh, when one's vantage point becomes so vast that it is able to encompass more and more of the vastness of the software of the universe. That's a breakthrough, and that is what we call uh, awakening or illumination.